Good morning, my name's Andy. This morning I'd like to answer the question, how much does trekking gear really cost if you go shopping in Tamil in Kathmandu? We had a little list of what we wanted to buy. So if you carry on watching, I'll show you exactly what we bought and give you the prices that we actually paid. I know I'm really sticking my head above the parapet on this one. I'm probably gonna get about one or 200 comments all saying, Andy, you paid way too much. But nonetheless, I hope this is gonna be helpful and beneficial to somebody. I'm gonna start by sharing one or two of my special haggling and negotiating tips with you. The first one is get rid of your expensive looking sports watch. The second one, ditch the Oakleys and expensive glasses. You gotta walk into that shop looking like you got no money. Don't take embarking on this shopping trip lightly. We got there about 10 o'clock which was good because a lot of the uh, shops hadn't had customers by then. But we decided to do a cruise round about oh, half a dozen or so shops just to see what was an offer, just to try and probe as to how much they're asking to start with and also keep an eye out and a list of what we thought was worth buying. Now believe me, after about an hour, you're gonna get tired of all the hustling and the bullshit. You're gonna need to be going in for at least a couple of cups of coffee visit a bakery, get some pastries for, for sustenance and stuff along the way. Now we saw some shoppers being downright rude and aggressive to the shopkeepers. To me, that's just not the tactic that's gonna work in this country. People are nice and friendly, and we've got ourselves in a good mood and is trying to get on with these guys. A bit of flattery from me about how, how nice their jumper was or how well their shop was looking seemed to break the ice quite nicely on several occasions. But notwithstanding this, you need to have a disciplined and firm approach in your negotiations. Decide on exactly what you're gonna buy and make sure you've got a target price that you don't go over and always be prepared to walk out the shop before you make the deal, because they probably will be coming, running after you. We were buying things as presents, really, so we were having to buy three different sizes. We were looking for long trousers, short trousers, and also we wanted to get some scarves and a big sort of mountain duffel bag. My first plan was to try and buy everything in one shop, but because of the variation in colours and sizes and things, we had to break this down and eventually we bought all our stuff from about three or four shops. But the more you buy in any one shop, that gives you more and more leverage to get the price down further still. Every time I got the price down to an unacceptable level to the shopkeeper, I then introduced another purchase into the bargain and that always seemed to get him to accept the previous price. Shown as Alpine is one shop that is renowned not for haggling. Their prices are pretty fixed, but it's all good quality stuff there. We went in there and ascertained that basic trekking trousers were about 1,200 rupees. We used that as a baseline, but later on in the afternoon, I walked out of one shop with the guy chasing me, offering them to me at 800 rupees. But these were basic trousers, not really technical ones. The first item we bought was definitely the most expensive and possibly the most important. We decided we were only gonna buy our sleeping bag from Shona's. It's a good reputation there. And this is a three seasons sleeping bag down from Yugoslavia and we paid $110 for this. We've subsequently tested it out for two weeks in Kumbu at altitudes up to 5,000 meters. And I can tell you it's warm as toast and when you're in a rough, cheap mountain lodge and the room's pretty grubby, snuggling up inside one of these all night keeping warm, it's worth every penny of that $110. When you're buying a sleeping bag, make sure you get the compacting bag thrown in so that you can make the sleeping bag nice and small to fit in your rucksack, but also negotiate so that you get a slightly bigger bag thrown in as well so that when you get home, you can keep the down sleeping bag in the bigger bag where it's not all crushed up and getting ruined. Remember, if you're in Thamel and you see any branded items, unless you're in something like an actual North Face shop, 
the stuff you're buying is almost 99.9% .9 gonna be fake. That means it's not gonna be covered by the manufacturer's warranty and it's unlikely to be the same sort of quality as an international brand either. By the afternoon, we were getting shopped out really and we felt we just had to make some purchases or just go home and forget the whole thing. Eventually, in one shop, we found three lots of trousers which were all the right sizes and colors and we bought a North Face set of trousers. These ones, which look like Chinese ones. And also we got these ones that are branded up. Lovely fake Arcteryx. We chose these trousers because they've got the hardware and patches on them. And also they're very uh, stretchy and comfortable as well. So yeah, wait for it. These were 5,000 rupees. Hey, don't think that is exactly the cheapest deal we could get, but hey, it's half the price of at home and we were happy. Next thing we bought from a different shop was three pairs of Arcteryx shorts. We got small, medium and large size. Spent quite a lot of time in this shop and I broke the rules here because while I was looking for the shorts, I found this Windstoffer jacket, which I thought was rather nice looking. Got Velcro cuffs, quite a snug hood, really nice soft lining and I think this might be quite good for cycling in because the hood is detachable and in the end we settled on 6,500 rupees for the jacket and the three pairs of shorts. Now if you ever go trekking up in the Himalayas you see tons of porters all carrying about two or three of these big mountain duffel bags and um, I really fancied one of these bags. They're about £100 at home if you buy the genuine article. And I bought this one, which is about 80 litres, which is marked as large, but there are bigger ones. And I paid 1700 for this one, which is a fairly easy deal, really. I think you could probably get them a lot cheaper than that, especially if you bought a couple or different sizes. Basically plastic, but it's got a shoulder strap. You can carry it like a rucksack and it's got handles as well. I think it's a great bit of international baggage. Good for if you go and sailing on a boat. Maybe a smaller one would be good for gym kit and stuff. Got mesh pocket inside. I'm really happy with this bright lime green one. Just hope it doesn't split in half a minute I get home with it. The other two things that Alison bought were these really nice soft yak wool blankets and um, we asked the price of these and the guy said 500 rupees each. We'd seen them a lot more expensive and we just quite frankly thought it's such a reasonable price. We just bought them anyway without even haggling. Everybody was happy on that one. It's now six months later, May 2020 in the COVID-19 lockdown, but we're back at home and I just want to update you. The uh, base camp duffel bag safely got all my equipment back home to North Wales here. The actress trousers have been really good to wear, but unfortunately, the actress shorts, the buckle went here, or oh, the little snap thing, so we had to stitch that back on. The North Face Windstopper jacket has been fantastic on my bike in some really cold weather. It's kept the chill off. Only trouble is with this, guess what? Pocket zipper's broken. So the moral here is, when you buy anything like this, really check the stitching and stuff, which we did. It's all good, but it's the zips and fasteners to look out for. Meanwhile, I'll be looking forward to going back to Kathmandu to take these two things back once the crisis is over. So there we are, there's all my stuff. I've been honest with the prices. Let me know what you think. And if you'd like to see some more of my videos, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and I hope to see you again yeah. soon. Bye bye for now.